Hello again, this time we learn how to uh, develop and run our own uh, functions on OCaml lists. I hope you still remember recursion. I hope, I'm sorry, I hope you are actually familiar with recursion. I hope you still remember, or I, at least I hope you've watched my uh, OCaml tutorial series where I explained recursion and the way OCaml uh, um, uh, f sort of facilitates and makes recursion very, very easy. Uh, using lists usually you will be using recursion quite heavily and uh, recursion plus pattern matching of course if you remember from before um, let's have a look at some uh, at a simple function and then we can make things slightly more complicated as we move forward but always remember that uh, you need to be familiar with the recursion you need to learn uh, OCaml pattern matching and my favorite advice if you use data structures lists in particular quite uh, quite often then OCaml is your friend OCaml is what you actually need now let's assume that we have a list of, uh, of some items and we want to check whether an item is a member of that list or not here as you can see we have a function uh, the function let rec so it's a recursive function it's called has element and then it receives two arguments L and E and what we're doing here is we're doing pattern matching with L so we're checking L yes uh, these are two uh, square brackets opening and closing and what I'm saying here is that match L with if L is like this ie if L is an empty list then return false so if L is empty then return false if L has some elements ie head and tail so head H for head and then the operator to um, attach or append an element to a list and then tail what this means is head is at the, the very first element of the list and T is the tail ie the remaining part of the list so head is an element T is another list sublist uh, which is the full list minus the very first element which is head I hope this makes sense if you remember the, the last video if not please go back to the last video and see what this means that head uh, double colon T this means an element inserted or appended to the beginning of a list anyway so if my list is not empty ie it still has some elements head and head and tail then let's compare our element against the tail if the, ie the head I'm sorry our element against the head of the list the first first element of the list if E our element the one we're looking for the one we're trying to check whether it, it exists in the list or not if it's e if it equals the head then return true if not so my list still has other elements then I can call the same function because it's recursive but now with the tail only I don't have to say, in fact I don't have to say list to tail L I can only say T because they are equivalent as we mentioned before that this is actually head uh, double double colon T this is an element and this is a sub list this is the remaining part of the list ie the full list minus the first element let me go to my uh, top loop copy and paste this let's copy and paste it and then for example call it with let's say uh, a list of one two three four and then five or six it returns false because it doesn't exist and notice that we actually loop through all the elements of the list now recursively if I find the element then we exit immediately notice that the recursion the recursion here helps us uh, exit as soon as we find the element we don't have to run through the remaining part of the list as long as we find the element we're looking for if you don't uh, if you don't believe me let me or just want to learn more let me return the function as it was so I'm using the list of tail now to take a part of the list L although as we said we have it here that's not necessary but these two functions are, are equivalent and let me call the new function again and it returns true because you found element 3 so I hope you make uh, this makes sense and by the way we can we can actually we can actually um, transform this into the other format we mentioned before we can say this is equals function we can get rid of the match with and this should be exactly the same and then put this as T 
and copy and paste that and should be this should be exactly equivalent and bound value e oh by the way that's when we actually have uh, one element rather than two elements yes that's true so let me put it back as it was that's very convenient when we have only one element so maybe we can send this by the way as maybe a tuple for example and that should make a lot of uh, um, um, let me think about it no we need the e because we're, we're dealing with the list here but we don't actually process the e we only use it for comparison though that won't work maybe in the next one it will work as we will see now in this function we try to duplicate the elements of a list so if I give you a list of 1, 2, 3, then we need to have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. The way this works as follows is as follows. So let recursive duplicate list duplicate list elements. ls is my list now, and then I match it with if it's an empty list, then return empty. If it if it has a head and tail, then what I do here is I just attach or append the head twice, i.e. I duplicate the element twice into the result of the function which is a recursive function and now I call the function with the tail i.e. with the remaining part of the list I hope this makes sense and this is actually uh, a typical example of using the other format of the function but let's just make sure it runs uh, now I need to call this duplicate list elements so let me copy and paste this again and if I pass it, for example, a function, uh, I'm sorry, a list of char, maybe chars, maybe A, B, uh, maybe and C, then what it does is it duplicates every element A, A, B, B, C, C, as you can see. And now we can actually transform this into the other format, the proper functional format, so we, we can get rid of the match. I've explained this in my. Um, or camera tutorial series you can have a look at that we we'll do pattern matching and these two functions are exactly the same they are equivalent if I copy and paste that call with the chars just to make things clearer then the result should be exactly the same I hope this makes sense now let's have a look at something slightly more complicated it's very easy but slightly more complicated let's have a look at how we can reverse a list although the list module on a camel does have a function called rev r r e v to reverse a list but let's develop our own function now let rec reverse list and then now we have two parameters ls and nls so ls is the original list and NL, nls is the new list or maybe let's call it rls which is the reverse list just r for reverse now we match ls with if it's an empty list then we return rls if not then what we do is if it has a head and a tail then we call reverse list with the tail and that should hold the result so the result should be nls at square brackets with a h inside them what I'm trying to do here is I because we have now the head of the list as an element we can put it inside square brackets so we can consider it as a list now a list of only one item which is h and then we can attach it or append it to the end of the rls this would be r the rls which is the result list notice now the way i'm going to call this function is by passing it two parameters i'm going to pass it my list that i want to reverse and then an empty list rls now needs to be an empty list. I'm sorry, I need to copy and paste the function quickly. RLS needs to be an empty list. So what I can say is reverse list, for example, and then let's say um, my no, my space element name space is space maybe I should have done the other way around Noreddin. okay don't have to have a capital N and then what I do now I pass it an empty list and the result should be Noreddin is name my so my name is Noreddin we retrieve the reverse of that list but remember always or notice this 
pattern here when we have the head and tail and the way I treat the head as an uh, as a as <coughs> a list on its own when I put it inside square brackets and then attach it or append it to the end of the RLS the resulting or the reverse list and notice now when I pass the um, empty list as a second parameter. Some people what they do is I remember when we spoke about we can have functions inside functions so some people what they do is they pass the original function only one one uh, element uh, one parameter which is the original list the original function is not recursive and then they have another sort of auxiliary recursive function inside that function to do the same thing these are equivalent and by the way when we deal with um, recursion there's something called tail recursion and it, it's the concept of actually carrying the result every time we recurse every time we have one iteration we carry the result with us uh, to avoid having to sort of popping or reversing back the whole the, 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 the call function stack the function called the function stack to get the result I hope you understand how recursion works say recursion is a way of carrying the result of, of, of the process every time we iterate so as soon as we want to stop we exit with the result this function is still recursive because it carries the result every time it, it it actually recurses every time it iterates as you can see the result is in this function here and that's why I send it an empty function and I'm sorry an empty list so we can start putting the result or attaching or appending the result to that list as you can see enough talking I hope this makes sense I hope now you started to get the power of OCaml the power of functional programming in the next video we'll either have more functions ie develop our own functions or we'll have a look at the Oka or the list module and use some functions from there for this now thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time